The most volcanically active area within California is located near the town of Mammoth Lakes. Four separate volcanoes, including the Long Valley Supervolcano and Mammoth Mountain Volcano, are located in the vicinity. Altogether, these volcanoes have erupted eight times in the last 1,000 years, with the most recent eruption occurring at Mono Lake in 1890. These volcanoes have created many beautiful features including hot springs, lava domes, and more explosion craters. One of the many beautiful features created by this long chain of volcanoes is a grouping of volcanic columns. These columns have a beautiful hexagonal patterning to them and altogether are known as Devil's Postpile. They look to be man-made due to their geometric shape yet are completely natural in origin. So, how did this volcanic outcropping form? This video will discuss this geologic oddity which is protected as part of Devil's Postpile National Monument. The Devil's Postpile National Monument can be found in central eastern California near the border with Nevada. Specifically, it is six miles west of the town of Mammoth Lakes. First, some clarification. In this section of California, there is a long, tabular body of magma underground called a dike. This dike has created a 25-mile or 40-kilometer long zone of activity which has created three separate volcanoes. These are Mammoth Mountain, Mono Inyo, and Mono Lake. In all likelihood, these distinct volcanoes could technically be classified as a single volcano, but this isn't important for the topic of this video. This volcanic chain began erupting dark-colored basaltic lava approximately 400,000 years ago on the western edge of the Lawn Valley caldera. This fresh lava contrasted with the much lighter colored rhyolite lavas of the much larger supervolcano, allowing for the two volcanic systems to be easily differentiated. Over tens of thousands of years, the line of potential eruptions expanded to both the north and south. Then, 80,000 years ago, a fresh volume of low silica magma rose towards the surface. After a series of earthquakes related to the underground movement of the magma, it erupted in a spectacular lava fountain. As large quantities of lava gushed out of this newly formed vent, a river of lava was created which flowed into a narrow valley. Over the span of several weeks, a dark black lava flow piled up within the valley until it was approximately 500 feet or 152 meters thick. Eventually, this eruption ended. Due to the thick mass of recently erupted lava, it took a very long time for it to cool. The lava at top cooled first. It consisted of numerous evenly spaced centers. As it cooled, the lava contracted towards these centers in an even manner. Due to the overall crystal structure, this occurred from six different sides. Soon, the lava cracked as it contracted, resulting in the creation of numerous closely spaced hexagons. Over time, these primarily hexagon fractures propagated downwards to the rest of the overall lava flow. Later, during the last glacial period, glaciers swept over the landscape, removing a large chunk of the top section of these basaltic columns. After these retreated, what remained was a rounded top where hexagons are exposed. What you see today largely represents the bottom of the overall lava flow. Overall, these basalt columns are quite large. Some measure more than 3.5 feet in diameter and 60 feet long. Due to the near vertical deposition of these columns, they look like tall posts stacked in a pile. As a final note, other interesting basaltic columns can be found at Devil's Tower in Wyoming, Giant's Causeway in Ireland, and Panska Scala in the Czech Republic. These beautiful features can form almost anywhere there is a thick basaltic lava flow. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, if you would like to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon.